Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Let's take a look at Michigan State running back Kenneth Walker, number nine. And you're going to see him on this particular play get five yards on a run to the far sideline. And he's going to outrun the linebacker, and he's going to get a decent enough angle on the safety so that he can get that five-yard gain. Now, it's a nice display of speed and acceleration here. But one of the things that we're seeing is that he could do a better job setting up this run. Because number five, the linebacker right here, Walker needs to see this linebacker. Know that the linebacker has that outside angle. So he wants to eliminate that angle. And one of the things that's coached for running backs on perimeter runs is to give a dip to the inside. And it's at this point right here where Walker needs to swing this outside leg around and get downhill just enough to force the defender to get downhill and then burst past the defender. If he does that, instead of the defender running sideline to sideline, defender gets downhill, he can run around it, and it may give Walker enough room, because the defender had to change direction, may give Walker enough room to cut inside number 17, because 17's leverage is to the inside. He has the inside advantage here against this outside safety, who's playing contained to that far edge. So if Walker can dip downhill, go cut back out, that slows this linebacker just enough to honor the inside. And then he can dip out and cut inside and wind up having to block and get a bigger gain. Instead, Walker just flattens out right here because he didn't dip. He's now forced to flatten out and run towards the leverage advantage of the safety. And it really doesn't do any justice to the block in the position that his wide receiver had set up. And so now this is just a race to get some yardage. And it's a five-yard gain. There's nothing wrong with that per se. But he could get a lot more. He's leaving yards on the field. So when NFL teams say running backs leave yards on the field, it's because they understand some of these concepts that when you're working to the outside, you want to give a little bit of a dip to the inside. Even if he started his dip right here, right here, just make a step to the inside. This would slow number five, force number five to turn his hips. And once five turns his hips, Walker could turn back outside and then dip downhill up to number seven. And this would be a big game. Walker does a good job of picking up blitzes. Now there's a linebacker blitz here um, just inside the left tackle. He does a good job of getting enough depth where he can shoot his shot as a cut blocker. I also like that he does a good job of being able to shoot forward so that he doesn't land or hit his head on an accompanying um, teammate in the pocket. This is going to be a tighter area for him to shoot across a defender, but he shoots too low. And as a result, he just hits the leg and the defender just stumbles and could still have had an opportunity to disrupt this pocket. Now that's one issue. The other issue is that when you're blitz pickup, when you're doing blitz pickup, you want to also make sure that you are attacking the defender who is working furthest to the inside. And the defender who's doing that is this defensive end right here. And Walker's focused on the linebacker. He lets the man who's the innermost blitzer go by, who winds up sacking the quarterback. So Walker has to do a little bit better job of adjusting and understanding the basic blitz rules of taking the innermost man and giving the quarterback responsibility for the outermost man. And let's take a look at it from this angle because this may give us a better idea of what he sees. He's looking here all the way. What he doesn't anticipate is 33 coming through. He thinks 79 is going to have 33. And 79 doesn't do that because 79 is accounting for number 17 over here in the middle of the field. So Walker and 79 have a miscommunication. It might be on 79, it might be on Walker. I'm anticipating that the way 79 is handling this, that it's likely on Walker that he needed to take this innermost man and pick him up. I like Walker's footwork. Now, you're going to see this run here where he gets through and he makes a linebacker miss in the hole. And this is a nice play because he anticipates the shot. 
he uses his forearm to kind of, or his stiff arm to basically reinforce that the defender needs to go low. And then he gets his back foot and knee high. Getting the back foot and knee high allows him to avoid most of the contact from the defender and just run through a reach from the defender to the front leg right there rather than getting wrapped up at the back leg. Then he's able to bring high and around. That gets him past the line of scrimmage. And he's able to extend for the extra yardage. Let's take a look at it again from the red zone view. You can see number 11 shoot through here. Good job opening the hips there. Getting the feet and ankle high to avoid that wrap. And then a nice little cut downhill to extend and lean for an extra yard or two. I like that Walker will take what he can earn on a play. You're going to see penetration here up the middle from a stunting linebacker. Walker is able to open his hips very nicely here and cut downhill to be able to at least get to back to the line of scrimmage and take what he can get on the play. Now, it may look from this angle that he has an outside crease here, but you've got to understand the leverage of this defender outside prevents that. So there's really no bounce out or cutback opportunity. When we look at it from this angle, you'll see it become a little bit more evident. As he heads downhill, here's the stunting linebacker, sees it right away. Watch how he takes one short step and then opens his hips right here. This is a great job. You see the hip flexibility. You see that he doesn't have to get close to, or to the defender to open his hips here. So there's an economy of movement that I really like about Walker and that's in conjunction with his ability to see what's happening or developing early in the run. So he's a lot giving himself time to slide to the outside, knowing that the leverage is at a disadvantage to this left side, that he can't run into that. So he just gets downhill, makes a little jump cut to get downhill and inside that stunting linebacker and squeeze through that crease as much as he can to fall forward and mitigate a loss. Mitigating losses is sometimes just as important as making, you know, getting gains because this is a certain loss here if he does anything other than what he did. Very sweet feet here, nice hip flexibility for Kenneth Walker, all conjun in conjunction with his vision of identifying what's going wrong with this play and that he's not going to be able to find anything that goes right. Walker's definitely a smooth back. You can see here that with the line really wiping the defensive front to the right with their, with their blocks, just kind of reaching to that right side, you see Walker do a good job of getting downhill, but he doesn't try and bounce it all the way to the left side because he knows that there's containment here and pursuing down the line. So he stair steps it, which is the way you should go. He gets into the line, gets within a step or two of these defenders, and then makes that bounce so that he can get underneath that backside pursuit of the defensive back who's just coming down the line here to prevent the, the bounce outside. And then Walker's off to the races. And he probably beats this defensive back if he doesn't stumble right here. And part of it isn't that he stumbled. He stumbles trying to cut back inside this defender, which I find interesting because I think he had enough speed to continue downhill, but he was hoping maybe he could beat this defender as well and rip off a really big play and maybe cut back against the grain. And he ends up slipping. Walker does a better job with cut blocking on the perimeter. It's a little less problematic because he can square up a defender. He can turn his hips with the angle the defender takes. See how the defender flattens out his angle to get downhill? Walker responds, opening up his hips to go with him, maintains the angle, and then cuts across the frame. Now he's still a little bit low, but he shoots through enough and fast enough with his timing that it drops the defender and keeps the pocket clean off of that side for the quarterback to deliver the ball. Let's take a look at it from this angle. Here comes Walker. He spots it right away, squares up, opens his hips to turn outside with three who had flattened out, and then works across. And he still gets, you know, to the knees and the hip. It's, it's high enough, absolutely high enough, to drop the defender at the spot that he's at at the contact. And that's a lot of room there for the quarterback to operate. Walker skilled at making defenders miss in space. You're going to see this as a receiver. He does a good job extending his hands right here. 
catching the ball with his fingertips, tucking the ball under his outside arm, getting square with the defender who's coming across the field. Hard stick, makes the defender miss, get some yardage before he's wrapped up here by the backside uh, linebacker. But still, five-yard gain, not bad. When you can make the first man miss, that's what you need. That's really what's mostly expected from, especially with that pursuit downhill. Again, making the first defender miss. Right, we're going to watch Walker here on a gap play. Does a good job of following his lead block, pulling through a reach, pulling through a wrap with the good body lean, getting his feet up, keeping his pads lean so he can pull or push through at least a, a reach or a wrap by the other linebacker here. But to be able to break multiple tackles, even though they're minor tackles in terms of difficulty to break, they're still tackle attempts. They're still contact. So the fact that, you know, one, I like seeing him run zone and gap plays, and he's able to work this gap play pretty well and work through trash to get positive yards, all good. This is a nice example of good pass protection because you're going to see the linebacker who's going to be pressuring here outside the guard. And you see that Walker does a good job of identifying the linebacker, but he works tight to his guard so that he can help with the double team first, get a little lick in there, and keep that defender from getting too far outside too early to help out his guard, and then fan out to deliver his hands and shoulders into the linebacker. Smart play. This is what you want to do. You want to be able to help your teammates while at the same time tracking the defender. So the fact that he can work deep enough, he can be of help on the defensive tackle and then slide off of that and get a hit on the linebacker, that's the kind of thing you want to see from an interior pass protector at the running back position. Now this is a gorgeous run by Kenneth Walker. You're going to see him here make a couple of moves to make defenders in the secondary miss. and stretch that gain out for another five to seven yards. I mean, let's look at this again. Because, you know, he does a good job reading the cutback opportunity here as a down block to the inside, and he beats the linebacker through the hole. Fine. Like the pad level, like the ability to kind of bend around here. This is nice curvy linear movement here. It's not really a cut as much of it is a, is a bend. Bends to the outside, then he... Is, I think this is more of a bend back to the inside. Look at this. No, that's more of a cut. So you see kind of a bend outside, a stick, and then and then two little steps with the stiff arm to work back to the inside. Makes two defenders miss with that cut back inside, which kind of explains the earlier play where he tries to um, cut back under the safety and slips because he's confident in his cutting ability. When you see a play like this, now you understand why when he went outside earlier in the game and tried to cut back inside and he slipped, why he decided to do that. Because he makes effectively three defenders miss on this play. Let's take a look at it from the overhead view. This is a pretty run. There's the bend, there's the cut. Yeah, good work. Nice finish, too. This is a great example of the power of good burst. You're going to see a toss play and see 53. He takes the inside route here on this toss. Sees that this is going to be a toss. Plants his foot on the ground and spins away. So now he's free. But look at Walker. Walker accelerates right through the reach of 53. And then has to get dragged down by a defensive back. But that burst affords him momentum generated power to work through the reach and eliminate the angle of number 53. Let's look at it again one more time here. Watch 53. Does a good job reading the situation and spins out. But Walker is just too quick for him. Gets through and gets the angle so that the defender has to wrap from behind and just cannot hang on with the first reach attempt. So another great example of change of direction, and you can see him layer movements in this particular run. You're going to see him work downhill, cut back away from the penetration, 
break a couple of tackles, and then that sweet jump cut on number 26 on this play. I mean, look at this. There's the double team. He sees the the push on the right side of this 64-67 double team by the defensive tackle, so he doesn't head downhill, even though the, the run is designed for him to work towards his double team and maybe to the right side of it. But he bounces his play outside, makes the defender miss, opens his hips, bounces it away from the defensive tackle who has an unblocked angle, beats that angle. Then he sets up the defender. Look at the setup of the defender here. That little juke inside out, or outside in, excuse me. Let's look at that again, outside in. A little juke outside in. Nice little shoulder and head fake along with that. Gets downhill, the defender pulls through the reach of that and the wrap of the defensive of the um, linebacker. They end up colliding because he really makes them miss more than he breaks contact. But he does work through contact. He just mitigates the level of contact due to the move that he makes. That little head fake outside in makes them run into each other. And then the sweet jump cut after that. Really nice play. Walker's ability to avoid defenders is really uh, a great strength of his game. You're going to see here where he encounters the push into the backfield, peeks to the outside, realizes nothing there, and now he's got to face an unblocked 99 one-on-one. -on -one. He's too quick for 99. And then the cut downhill to avoid the linebacker, that is a sweet cut. I mean, we're talking about two small steps at most. One, two, and he's already downhill. He's really that second step. He's already beginning downhill. Watch this. One, two, downhill, avoids the linebacker, takes the hit of the safety, and really runs through that and ends up getting wrapped by other defenders on this play. Runs through that safe. He has to, like, he ends up running over the safety here, but the defensive back, the corner, runs through that and gets wrapped from behind by another linebacker. Let's take a look at it from this angle because it's it's really something to behold. I mean, this here gets out of the trash. That's fine, but it's this, that two-step little move. Look at the bend to be able to bend around and get inside this linebacker's pursuit. That's a tight corner he just took. And then, you know, the hit from the defensive back runs through that. Really great work. Just to show you kind of the heights of Kenneth Walker's ability to change direction, this isn't a huge gain by any stretch of the imagination, but on this toss play, after he makes his cut back away from number five and avoids number five, look how he jumps to avoid number five, and then when he lands, he's landing so that the toe's pointed so that he can bend it back to the outside. He ends up making a lot of 96 wrap miss, and he ends up just working through a reach and extending forward through a wrap by the linebacker. But the ability to have the balance and footwork and the overall agility to jump cut away from a defender, land with your toe pointed to the boundary so that you can immediately bounce outside and you make that decision while you're in the air, essentially, to avoid a direct contact with a defensive tackle and get a couple extra yards, that's nice work. That's the kind of thing I've seen Nick Chubb do. I don't see many backs do it. Doesn't mean this guy is like Nick Chubb. I'm saying this one little asset, this one little thing, reminds me of Nick Chubb. This was my first impression of Kenneth Walker, and I like what I see from him. I mean, certainly a seems to be a smart back with his decision-making, can run zone or gap can run out, get outside on you, but can take it up the middle and run tough. He has moves, and it's a variety of moves in his tool book. He doesn't lean on any single one. He's very efficient with his feet, but he can make dramatic movements when you need him to, but, he's, but he doesn't lean on it. Can catch the football, has some promise as a blocker. This is the first back I've seen in a while this year in terms of this year's scouting that I feel pretty confident about him contributing right away and possibly becoming a lead back. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, on my site, 
www.mountwaldmanrsp.com.